Hey, what's up? This is Kevin from Kevin's Barbecue Joints, and in this episode of Barbecue City Guide, where I talk to a barbecue expert about where to go if you have one or two days in a specific city or region, I talk to Bud Kennedy about Fort Worth. He's from the Star Telegram. He has a call and eat speed. Uh, it's just a wealth of knowledge. It's really, really cool. He goes into detail about barbecue joints to go to, ones that may not be on your radar or off the beaten path, but he also talks about what days to go, what time of day to go. He also gives a tip as to when to go to a barbecue joint that has a long line, what day of the year to go, what days of the year to go. Really insightful, really interesting. He also talks about specific items to order, specialties. It's just wonderful. Thank you so much, bud, for participating. If you like what you see, please subscribe. I'll be adding at least two or three of these per week. Thanks so much. Enjoy. Good morning, bud. Good morning. Welcome to Texas. <laughs> I feel like I'm in Texas. This is great. Yeah, I, can I actually... feel like I'm in Texas, too. <laughs> Isn't that weird? Both of us are. <laughs> so what I wanted to do, I wanted to talk to you. If someone was coming into Fort Worth and they had a day or two days where, what restaurants, what barbecue joints they should definitely make sure they, they hit and if there's any off the beaten path places that they might not know of? Well, you know, I'd sort our barbecue places into, into two categories. There's the legacy restaurants and then there, there's the new, uh, you know, the, the more uh, craft barbecue. Uh, the, the best barbecue, I think uh, Daniel Vaughn agree, for Texas Monthly agrees with this, is barbecue on the Brazos. It's mm. in Crescent. It's south, southwest of Fort Worth. It's at a Texaco gas station in front of a motorsports facility. And the lines start about 9.30 in the morning there for the brisket. He has a lot of uh, brisket, ribs, sausage, uh, a lot of, uh, a lot of homemade, uh, homemade sausage. And then he has uh, really good side dishes, too. That's the one barbecue place on the Fort Worth side of DFW that's considered as good as Pecan Lodge in Dallas. So it has, the, uh, it has that, that cachet. Uh, we have. Is it open seven days? I mean, five days a week? No, it's not open. Um, gosh, I'm going to have to check. It's not open either Sunday and Monday or Monday and Tuesday. Okay, okay. I'll I'll put a link uh, to the to the hours below. But it's not open every yeah, day. Yeah, it's not open every day. So be careful. But you can go early, and uh, I mean, if you get to town in the morning, you can head out that way. And if it's nine thirty or ten, you'll beat the line. And of course, there's a longer line later in the day. Uh, yeah, they're closed on Sunday and Monday. So okay, come Tuesday excellent. through Saturday. Barbecue on the Brazos in Crescent. And how, how long will the line be generally? The line, the line will only be 10 or 15 people. It'll, it'll be barely out the door, maybe 20 people. Okay. At peak on a Saturday at lunch or something like that. That's so fantastic. It's not like Heim Barbecue. So, and that's the other one I need to talk about is Heim. Okay. Heim Barbecue is the trendy, craft, uh, hipster barbecue in Fort Worth. It's, it's the, oh. the Brooklyn barbecue with Texas Texans producing it. <laughs> You know, in Texas flavor in the middle of Fort Worth South Side. Heim started out as a barbecue truck, like all good barbecue restaurants do. And then he eventually took over a restaurant. He has the prime brisket. He has, uh, he has the upscale ribs and sausage. He has something that is really an attraction at Heim, H-E-I-M, and it's called Bacon Bird Ends. You know, he uh, he uh, takes bacon and wraps it around and, and dips it in. It's a, it's a sugar-cured you know, piece of bacon is oh. what it amounts to. So, oh. uh, but it's just a delicate little cube of, of, of wonder. Oh, that and, sounds uh, so good. <laughs> so Heim is really the, the, the big attraction. Heim is the one where you see 20, 30, 40, 50 people in line. Okay. Uh, the time to go, the best time to go to Heim, and really this is a tip for any busy restaurant, whether it's uh, Franklin or anything, is in the morning after a big holiday. So the morning after the 4th of July, the morning after St. Patrick's Day, when a lot of people are sleeping in, those are the best times to go beat the line at a big barbecue. That's place. a great tip, huge and, tip. And at Heim, Heim is open Sunday as well. It's closed on Monday, so it's open Sunday, mid afternoon on Sunday. There's not a line sometimes, so but there's often a line at Heim. Heim is in the trendy uh, Magnolia Avenue district on the south side of Fort Worth with craft ice cream and and craft bakeries and craft barbecue and craft Italian food and and craft tattoos on all the, the, <laughs> the, uh, the people there. So Heim is the cool hipster barbecue. The barbecue on the Brazos is kind of the serious Texan barbecue. And Heim isn't open for dinner, though, just lunch, right? Heim is open for dinner. Heim, oh, is. Is, open for, Heim is open for lunch and dinner every day. Okay. And they're open until 9, I believe. And, the, uh, and so they're, they're open lunch and dinner every day. Barbecue on the Brazos runs out of barbecue about 6. Okay. But Heim is a lunch and dinner restaurant with a full bar. Oh, that's great and to know. So, and so you, you go stand in line. Uh, 
get your sandwich, get your plate piled high, uh, you know, get your drinks from the bar. They have cocktails. Uh, it's a full restaurant experience with great barbecue. Excellent. Okay, those are great places, and those are places probably a lot of people aren't. They're not necessarily on people's radar because they're they're thinking of all the other places like Pecan Lodge or Cadillac or right. They're thinking of the Dallas restaurants. Yeah. Heim, uh, Heim, Heim ranks right up there, uh, and we've gotten Heim has gotten better. A lot of restaurants uh, when they move to a bigger restaurant or bigger location, they, they struggle. But That's Heim true. has moved to Heim has moved to a bigger place. They're producing more barbecue and they've gotten better at it. They have a special on Sundays now. They have corny dog Sundays where they take a, a really good sausage and they roll it in a special uh, raw beer batter and they make a, a you know i hate to say i hate to call it a gourmet corny dog i don't want to scare people off but it's a really 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 good corny dog with good mustard so that you could have a barbecue plate and the best corny dog you've ever had that's sundays at night oh that's so great thank you for those that's great and that, i think that's why that's another reason why i wanted to do these was because so that people would know about specific places like those two places and right. also items to get. If people are watching this after around Christmas of 2018, Heim's opening a second location in the River District on the west side of Fort Worth. So oh. depending when you watch this, there may be a second Heim location uh, near the uh, near the uh, Naval Air Base on the west side of Fort Worth. Oh, that's great. So oh, thank they're you. opening another store. Awesome. So we have the, these two that are like craft quality, top 50 barbecue places. And then we have the legacy restaurants that the, all the barbecue uh, lovers go and, and they pay homage okay. to, the, to the great history. And the big one of those is Angelo's Barbecue mm. near downtown Fort Worth. Angelo's Barbecue opened on St. Patrick's Day in uh, 1968. They just celebrated their 50th anniversary. And so they, uh, and when they opened, they only served uh, beer, cold beer and deviled eggs. And then a couple of days later, they finally got the pit working and added the brisket. But the, That's great. The, uh, but Angelo's uh, has Angelo's has begrudgingly changed over the years. It's this big cavernous beer hall. It has uh, stuffed you know, game trophies everywhere. There's a big stuffed grizzly bear when you come in the door. Uh, it's a sprawling, rambling Texas barbecue shack. They've changed over the years very, very slowly. After about 20 years, they added air conditioning. That was a big, big <laughs> addition in Texas. It took them about 30 years to start taking credit cards. That was another big that was another big change. It was a big step for folks oh, that's at so funny. Ch Change was tough. Oh, that's and so then funny. in the last, and then in the last few years, they've added uh, fountain drinks and they have uh, uh, craft beers. They used they used to only have um, you know light or dark beer. And, and when you went in, you know you you would order bar a barbecue sandwich and a, and a beer. And, and they had these giant frosty glob goblets of. Of, uh, of beer. There's the coldest beer in town. We actually ran a test once with the thermometers and it was the coldest beer Truly. in town. And the, uh, and so you know, the joke was that when you, when you heard you know, that you would go to the counter and order and the, uh, the woman taking orders would holler over to the bartender and uh, she would always holler one large, one large, one large. You never, ever, ever heard anybody holler one small. Everybody <laughs> always ordered one large in Angelo's. So, oh, that's it, so, uh, so now they have craft beer. They have a lot more variety. They have more side dishes. They've, they've kind of, they, they've come into the 20th century now that we're about 18 years in. They, 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 they've made a little bit of progress. But Angelo's is the history. In the old days, in the 50s, uh, you know, Neiman Marcus, so when Stanley Marcus wanted to cater and tell people, show people the best of Texas. He would have barbecue from, he would have brisket from Tioga Barbecue, which is north of Dallas, Fort Worth, toward the Red River. But he would always have pork ribs from Angelo's. Oh. Angelo's was the first restaurant that really made pork popular in North Texas and brought pork ribs in. Of course, now everybody has pork ribs and most places have pulled pork too. Yeah, for, oh, that's great. Thank you for that history. I've always wondered about that. Yeah, Angelo's is the legacy. There's one other restaurant called The Railhead. And the, the uh, there's a wasp, pardon me. The, 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 the railhead uh, was started by a, a couple of partners who left Angelo's. And so okay. it's close to the museums and the cultural district. The food's very similar. People generally say go to Angelo's for, for brisket or ribs and also go to railhead for ribs. It's closer to the freeway, has a little bit different hours. So uh, you know, the railhead also is a, a, a old barbecue restaurant. It's owned by one of the most powerful politicians in Texas, that representative Charlie Guerin. So oh, wow. it's some some good political barbecue. Oh, that's great. Oh, that's fantastic. So are there any other any other tips that you any other places? Well if if Daniel didn't mention or I'll just mention again in Grapevine there's a restaurant called Meet You Anywhere. M E A T U Anywhere. It was that's that was the name of his barbecue catering company forever. 
and, and so uh, out, out there, the Sedano family, Andy Sedano used to work for Rudy's, which is a, a popular Texas chain with mm-hmm. very good chain barbecue, you know, not, not the most consistent, but so he took it all into a smaller, you know, smaller uh, operation where he could control everything. And he's doing excellent barbecue and grapevine and trophy club. So if you are at DFW airport, if you don't have time to get to Pecan Lodge or to Heim, you know, meet you anywhere is on the other side of grapevine. It's 10 minutes from the airport. You can go over there and have a Texas brisket sausage experience. And they open even at breakfast. So you can, if your planes, if you have like a three hour plane change in the morning, you can run over and meet you anywhere and have a great barbecue lunch and then head on out. There's also a Salt Lake barbecue at the airport. Uh, Salt Lake is the Austin outfit, but the, you know, they have to, that barbecue at the airport is actually smoked in Austin and flown to the airport to serve at DFW every day. Yeah, that's but a, try to get out, try to get out and go to meet you anywhere. Oh, that's excellent. And I think that Daniel did mention that too. So that's, that's a, a nice overlap, an important overlap. Well, yeah. well, thank you so much, but I, I truly appreciate this. Is, are there any ones, any other ones that little off the beaten path that I might've missed or no? You know, there's a, a restaurant uh, on the West side of Fort Worth named Billy's Oak Acres Barbecue. And the reason I'll mention that is because it's a place, it's the best place to go if you want an overall Texas meal or if people can't agree. Billy has pretty good brisket, pretty good ribs, above average, and he has a great chicken fried steak and chicken fried chicken. He has banana pudding. You know, if you want to go with a group and have a little bit of barbecue, a little bit of chicken fried steak, a, a burger, all the things that people come to Fort Worth for, the place to have them all in one place is Billy's Oak Acres Barbecue on Camp Bowie West on the west side. Oh, that's great. I'll put a link to that, too. Oh, I was going to ask you, too. Are there any other, like, because Fort Worth is known for meat, are there any other steakhouses or places that maybe people shouldn't miss on any, for an evening? I, that's kind of random. Oh. oh, gosh, I could go into the whole legacy here. I mean, you know, Swift and Armor started their packing houses here more than 100 years ago. This was the first packing house city outside of Chicago. This was oh. where... You know, Swift and Armor started all our packing operations. They wanted to bring the packing plant closer to the cattle. And so they, so they started them here in Fort Worth. And so in the early part of the 20th century, you had all these immigrants from Eastern Europe, from Mexico, from all over the rest of the world who came here to work in these awful jobs in the packing houses. And a lot of them went to start restaurants. Oh, interesting. Uh, even if you, a lot of people hear about, uh, I heard the Colonial Golfers mentioning it this weekend, Joe T. Garcia's is the big margaritas and Mexican food patio. It's a big patio restaurant that seats 2,000 people for Mexican food Whoa. on the north side of Fort Worth. Well, it's it's known for fajitas and enchiladas and chilarianos and mostly for frozen margaritas. But Joe T. Garcia started working in the packing house. Oh, and he's also he also has a great chili recipe. And if you go to lunch, you can have his tamales with chili. You can have his, his bistec ranchero. You can have some of the things that show his, his packing house ability. Oh, and uh, there's, an old, there's an old restaurant in the stockyard. It's called Cattleman's. It's a Mid-level steakhouse, I would say it's as good as the steak chains or roadhouse or whatever. But the great thing about it is it's got all this rustic wood paneling and these giant life-size portraits of, of stock show steers all around the room. And, yeah. and the, the Jane and Michael Stern in their books called it the Temple of the Great Beef God. Oh, no, that sounds then, like a great visit. And then the really good, the real high-end steakhouse is Grace Downtown uh, is a, uh, a fine dining steakhouse that has probably the very best steaks. And then there, uh, we have all the prime steakhouse chains. Ah, well, thank you so much, bud. I, I truly appreciate it. I truly appreciate the ambiance that you provided here too. That's <laughs> Thank you. Come on down here at barbecue. I tell people, people you know, barbecue is not a food. It's a way of life. And it's a way of life here in Fort Worth, Texas. I agree. I couldn't agree more. Thank you so much. Have a great weekend. And uh, I'll, I'll touch base when I head out there. Thank you. Thank you so much.